Hello all. So this video is just going to be a very brief introduction to the writings of Joseph Fletcher in relation to situation ethics, give you a little bit of context, talk about uh, when and where his uh, book situation, situation Ethics, The New Morality was published and the kind of the principles behind it. So who was Fletcher himself? He was at one point in his life an Episcopalian priest. So that's a, a denomination of Christianity that's kind of it's an, an American denomination that's, that's connected to the, the Church of England, essentially. So he was a, an American academic, um, worked at Harvard University, Episcopalian priest. Um, but he did indeed, after the publication of his 1966 book, Situation Ethics, New Morality, uh, turn his back somewhat, not on Christian principles, but on the established Christian church um, and became an, uh, an atheist. In terms of when Fletcher was writing his work on situation ethics, it was during the 1960s, which was a time, particularly in the US, but around the world also, of uh, great change politically um, and in terms of people's attitudes towards certain moral issues. So it's a time known as kind of the, the period of free love and hippies and all that kind of thing. But you've got, you know, in the 1960s, you've got this movement of, as I say, free love. So kind of um, sexual liberation and not judgment of towards sexual, different sexual approaches. Um, you've got the civil rights movement. You've got the second wave feminist movement, kind of fighting for equal rights of women in the workplace, that kind of thing. Um, and in particular, uh, the right to women, for women to have abortions. And so you've got a lot of kind of countercultural movements going on. You've got a lot of people who are going against the established norms and the established ways of doing things. And Fletcher was kind of on board with this, this trend that was occurring because the book that he publicised was quite controversial um, in terms of its being based on Christian principles but not really agreeing with the established Christian churches of any particular denomination on, uh, on a lot of fundamental um, approaches to decision making. So he kind of, as far as he was concerned, taken on board what he felt was the most important principles being put forward in the Bible on how one should behave, particularly in how Jesus taught uh, the teachings of Jesus, but he'd not really adhered to the established kind of uh, rule set in terms of what was acceptable for Christians to do or to not do, etc. So I guess the logical question to ask is why? Why did Fletcher take this approach? Why was he kind of uh, not on board with the established schools of thought at the time? Well, the two approaches that were, I guess, more popular at the time were that of kind of legalism, which is where you quite strictly adhere to or follow uh, laws and religious principles, religious rules, etc. And one of the main issues with legalism, one that Fletcher himself identified, is that it kind of, it takes the individual away from the situation in terms of the decision about what you should and shouldn't do, the decision about what is morally right or wrong, isn't actually dependent upon how the individuals involved in that circumstance are affected by it, but it's based on whether it follows a rule or not. So one of the kind of the criticisms that's often sort of levied at this approach, particularly in relation to Jewish and Christian ideas, is um, the fact that there are you know 613 commandments in the in the Old Testament um, in the, the Jewish Scripture, and so. In the New Testament, Jesus himself is kind of asked by, by someone, you know, there's 613 different rules here that I'm supposed to follow. How do I know which ones to prioritise and which ones are the most important? And Jesus himself, his response is to uh, love God first and to love thy neighbour. And I think these this that response of Jesus is very much at the heart of Fletcher's approach to 
decisions about right, wrong, morality and his, his situation ethics, you can see that kind of idea in the back of the work, his mind and the workings of his approach to situation ethics. You know, it's not about picking rules to prioritise necessarily. It's about the principle of love, love for God, love for your fellow humans, etc. And as I said before, if we're taking a legalistic approach, we take that, we take the humanity almost away from the situation. We stop being concerned about the impacts on an individual person and we just focus on how much it adheres to or follows specific rules that we're told we should follow. On the opposite end of the scale, um, the other school of thought that Fletcher didn't particularly agree with, um, had issues with, was, was rather anti-nominism. And that's kind of uh, nominee nomin- uh, meaning kind of, nomos meaning rule and anti meaning kind of not. So it's the idea that there are no rules that we should or we have to follow. Um, and if you think about the existentialist movement of the early 20th century this is uh, you know in a, in a similar vein um, we decide our own ideas of right and wrong we you know govern our lives and are entirely free to make decisions about how we should or shouldn't behave you know there's no objective moral uh, rules or principles that we need to apply to our lives we just make these, we're entirely free to make these decisions ourselves. Um, the problem being with that, that we could quite easily kind of descend into a, you know, Thomas Hobbesian state of nature where we're all just feral animals, entirely self interested and kind of not cooperating, not kind of um, working for the progress of human nature as a whole. Um, because you know we're only bothered about how things affect ourselves and don't have any principles that we need to to apply to uh, to our interactions with others. So legalism and antinomianism don't work as far as Fletcher is concerned. So he thinks that the best approach to this kind of thing is a situational one. So if we're talking situationalism, uh, particularly for Fletcher then we're saying that when we're making moral judgments, there aren't general rules that we have to follow or general principles that we should be um, bearing in mind adhering. Um, That each individual moral decision should be based on the circumstance um, that surrounds it, with the only kind of caveat being that in every situation, so it's not completely anti nominalism you can do whatever you want to. There is the, a caveat that in every situation we should be trying to do what is the most loving thing. So we still have one, I guess, guiding principle, which is relative to each individual circumstance. So ultimately, we are always aiming to do the most loving thing in any situation, but there aren't general rules that we have to apply to individual circumstances, we work out for ourselves based on that situation, relative to that situation, what the most loving thing to do is. So there's an example that uh, Fletcher himself uses in his book of a a woman who's been institutionalised, put in a mental health institute, um, and is there the victim of sexual assault and becomes pregnant. So she would not be particularly capable of caring for and looking after that child herself. And in the situation, the father approaches the institute and sort of says to them, look, this is a negligence issue on your part. You haven't cared for and looked after my child. She's now become pregnant. She's not capable of looking after it. I think the the best thing to do in this situation would be to allow her to um, have an abortion. And then the, you know, the hospital or the institute sort of saying, no, we can't do that because that goes against um, our rules. Our, we're not allowed to perform abortions unless it's uh, a life threatening circumstance. Well, according to Fletcher, the most loving thing to do in that circumstance would be to allow the abortion to be f- performed. You know, we're, we're thinking about how the consequence of this decision would impact 
the child, the mother, other family members, etc. And taking all of their feelings, um, impacts upon them into consideration, the best thing to do, the most loving thing to do, would be to allow the abortion. Now that's not to say that in all circumstances abortion should be allowed and we should go around aborting um, essential pregnancies or pregnancies whenever um, because again that would be suggesting that there's a, a rule that needs to be applied and there isn't it's just that in this particular circumstance Fletcher argues the most loving thing to do would be to allow the abortion so it kind of this situational approach has addressed the issues of both legalism and antinomianism by not adhering too strictly to rules, but also giving you the, the principle of love um, to guide your actions rather than making them essentially just arbitrary decisions. And the approach of Fletcher to situation ethics is seen as a as a teleological one, but again, telos meaning purpose. So it's seen as that because the purpose, the guiding kind of intent, the thing that we're, our goal, our aim in all our actions is love. So deciding whether something is good or bad, morally right, morally wrong, um, is a judgment on how close it is to achieving its aim um, of being loving. So again, to go back to the situation of the woman who becomes who was sexually assaulted you know the the most loving thing to do in that situation would be to allow the abortion to take place because that, you know, that would be get close to achieving the maximum amount of love or the most love um, rather than allowing her to suffer the child to potentially suffer and be raised in a, in a very unhappy situation so as I've kind of suggested or hinted at previously, this idea of um, love being the ultimate telos for our, uh, our actions and our moral decision making, it's not just an arbitrary principle that Fletcher comes up with. As far as he's concerned, it is kind of clearly visible within the Bible, particularly within the actions of Jesus Christ um, when he's not following the commandment of the Sabbath and actually works quote unquote on a Saturday by healing people you know the approach that he takes to say telling people to love thy neighbor um let he is without sin cast the first so stone there's there's multiple instances of him healing people performing those kind of miracles to, to care for people so as far as Fletcher is concerned this love and approach to love being the ultimate aim it's it's littered throughout the bible particularly the new testament um and so for for fletcher the bible is in essence love in action so it's lots of different examples of how to take the most loving approach in any individual situation and obviously as a christian as he was when he originally wrote the book the actions of jesus christ are often how um, one can kind of decide whether you've done the right thing, the wrong thing, etc. You know, Jesus was in a lot of ways almost a perfect example of how you should live your life. Um, and you can kind of see that in the formation of Fletcher's situation ethics, that attempting to emulate or to, to be near to, to be, to be like God in human form, aka Jesus, by following like what would Jesus do essentially that's the I think the the main reason behind Telos being the ultimate aim for Fletcher in his approach to situation ethics <laughs>